It is not every day we get a chance to talk to a guy who's a Hall of Famer on a Major League Baseball team, the New York Mets Hall of Fame, and one one of the all-time New York Mets and New York Yankees, part of three world titles with them. And when I say that, most people have probably figured it out already. Dwight Gooden, Doc, is in Sioux Falls today. And he joins us now on Sports Talk with Craig and John. Welcome to town, Doc. Hey, thanks for having me. So the natural question is, what is Dwight Gooden doing in Sioux Falls? (laughs) I actually here visiting a good friend of mine, Dr. Lou George. I'm um, here for surgery as well. Um, he's, a, he's a great, great, great friend. Well, I should say family member now, but um, has some problems, has some um, infections. And um, I ended up meeting George at his birthday party. We became good friends and did, found out the type of practice he do, which worked out good. I had a problem with my mouth. Um, I was lucky that over 20-some years of tobacco use, that it wasn't cancer or anything like that. It was just an infection. And Always had a problem, you know, going to the dentist. I had a big fear of doing that, and um, he made me comfortable. We talked about things we would do first, and first time I ever came to a dentist without my mom. <laughs> uh, she's always wow. bring me, but um, I felt comfortable with him. Even coming to his office, I just had this thing where when I was young, I had a tooth ejected without them, you know, using Novocaine, and I just had this fear that I never got over, which I met, you know, Dr. Lou here and his team, and um, – I'm going to say now I feel comfortable going to the dentist. My mom would have never thought in a million years she would hear her son say that. But they do a great job. And not only do they care about just you know doing the business, they stay in contact with you, make sure you're okay. And they care about you as a person first, which I thought very unusual. But also I love that about them. That just speaks volumes of their heart. Dr. Lou George is with the Siouxland Oral Surgery. And, of course, uh, Dr. George, a uh, big-time Mets fan. Uh, how did you two, though, actually meet? And when? Yes, well, we met, I guess, about I guess, for close to four years now. Um, I was actually doing a thing in um, Iowa, and, um, Fill the Dreams, when they did the Kevin Costner movie, um, they were playing a charity softball game. And uh, uh, my agent, Dr. Lou's wife, contacted him about coming to a surprise birthday party. And so I said, sure, I'll do that. I mean, <laughs> to me, I, I love my, all wow. my I love my fans. And um, anything I can do with, for the fans, I like to do that. And I came here. I met Dr. and his family. They were very nice people. And I just felt like I fit right in. I mean, it was like meant to be. We not connect. knowing, not knowing that eventually you'd be doing, having some dental work done. I had no idea of that when I, when I met him. It's, <laughs> it's amazing how the good Lord works. And um <laughs> We hit it off. I told him, I said, I'll be back. I'll be back to visit. He didn't think I would. I said, yeah, I'll be back. I didn't know I was coming back for dental work, <laughs> but <laughs> it worked out. And uh, we came, I came back to visit him. Good friends. We just got to talking. And he was saying, what kind of work you do? I said, really? And I was telling him about my thing. And we got some pictures and all that. He said, you could do some work and, you know, give me that bright smile again. And here I am. He's Dwight Good, 1985 Cy Young Award winner, world champion with both the New York Mets and the New York Yankees. And his doctor, Lou George, Siouxland Oral Surgery, is also with us. And I, I, this is incredible because you're from the New York area. You grew up a Mets fan. And where you grew up a Mets fan. Yeah. And, 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 and you met him just a few years ago, well after his career was over. And Doc's story is so public, so well documented, the ups and the downs. But starting with being the youngest major league pitcher to appear in an all-star game, to start in an all-star game. And the 86 title with the New York Mets, the 85 Cy Young. I, and I know you're not a Yankees fan, but <laughs> the comeback story was pretty cool as well in the late 1990s. So when, when you somehow w- were able to come in contact with him, uh, I mean, d- explain meeting him and what, what it's been like to be his friend. Well, um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to kind of tell that little bit of my story. Uh, I actually grew up in uh, Massachusetts and um, when uh, Doc came up and really started making a name for himself in 1984 is when I really came in, kind of came into my own with my own baseball interests, and, okay. and I decided, uh, well, I was going to be a Mets fan, you know. Uh, my dad was a Yankee fan, so, of course, I wasn't having any bit of that, all right? So I was going to be a Mets fan, all right? Um, uh, and so, you know, following him throughout his whole career, I mean, I, I told him when I met him, I, I felt like I knew him already because, uh, my mom and I, huge Mets fans, and, and we were there through the ups and the downs and and uh, just watching him break all kinds of records. So then, um, you know, when all these years later, when honored enough to meet him at my birthday party, and, and first of all, all my friends and family and all my patients know I like to talk. 
We get talking, I don't <laughs> shut up. But I didn't say anything for the first 10 minutes when he walked out at my birthday party. My wife totally had me. I, I stood there awestruck and then just followed him around, probably like a five-year-old, for the first 10 minutes. Like, I can't believe he's here. And then to have the opportunity to turn around and, and help him with something that he needed uh, for oral surgery and, and, and some other dental needs, uh, was, it, was a true, it was a true honor. And I, I, I thank God for the blessing to be able to do it. So, Doc, you're uh, you're thinking all the the problems you've had though was because of uh, tobacco, uh, the, uh, the chewing tobacco. Yeah, chewing tobacco. I think that was a big part of it. Um, I started chewing very young. Most guys start, you know, when they play professional baseball. Uh, my mom, she's a you know, southern girl from Georgia, um, half Indian, and she chewed. And like any kid, you see your parents doing something, you want to try it. I tried it, and unfortunately, I liked it. And so I started chewing and, and then dipping, you know, skull for a very long time. And then I started having problems with my gum, gum bleeding, and so on, um, tooth decay, bad tooth infections. And so it was time. To, I knew I needed some work done, but I was afraid. You know, Dennis, and it's, just amaz- it's amazing how things work out where you just go <laughs> visit a fan at the time, you know, they help him celebrate his birthday. And it turned out not only be, he became an oral surgeon to do my work, but we became good friends as well. What's keeping you busy today? Today, I do a lot of work with the kids. I still work with the Mets. Um, I work with the minor league pitchers. Um, if, if they have, like, a top prospect that's struggling, say, an eight ball double, I'll go there, spend my time with them, see what's going on. I do a lot of public appearances and stuff. I do public speaking with teens with addiction problems. Um, I like one place is telling my story, high school, colleges. Uh, it's great therapy for myself. Um, I have Luke's son in Maryland, Torvio, that plays all sports. I try to be involved with him and my daughter because um, with my older kids, I miss a lot of these school activities, miss a lot of these games because I was playing baseball as well. So with my two little kids, I try to be there for them as much as I can. And also, you know, I was told as a kid, trying to put a smile on a stranger's face, if, if, if you understand what I'm saying. And, and all that means is just trying to be there for anybody. We're all brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you're a president or a homeless person. I try to treat everybody the same and just trying to strengthen my relationship with the good Lord. He's Dwight, Doc Gooden, 1985 Cy Young Award winner, 1986 world champion with the New York Mets, and went on to become a no-hitting pitcher for the New York Yankees in 96, world champion with them as well. Sports Talk with Craig and John here on 98.1 FM, 1230 AM, Sports Radio in Sioux Falls. And, of course, Dwight Gooden is here to get a little more oral surgery work from Dr. <laughs> Lou George of Siouxland Oral Surgery. That's why he is here today. And, uh, again, you, your life has been well chronicled, and, and you've mentioned the addiction, but it— how long has it been since you've been th- sober this time around? And how challenging has that been, obviously, throughout your whole life? It's, it's challenging. Uh, I don't take no day for granted. Um, I have five years clean and sober by the grace of God. Um, the most important day is today. And, you know, you just try to take it a day at a time, sometimes a minute at a time. Um, you go through, and with my problem, my addiction, I had to be aware of things. When things are going bad, I had to be very aware of. And also, when things are going good, I had to be aware of. Because when things are going good, a lot of times, for my track work, I tend to let my guard down, cut back on my meetings, cut back on contact with my sponsor, con- you know, cut back on my support group. Um, unfortunately, over 20-something years trying to do it myself and figuring it out, so I, I think I have it somewhat together now, but I still don't take it for granted because sure. I know one, one false move, one false thought without sharing that with somebody, I can be in trouble and right back to where I was. Um, I don't want to live that life anymore. Um, I'm not getting any younger. And I just try to take a day at a time. And by me telling my story to kids and helping them, that's also a therapy for myself. I mean, I, I can't imagine the 80s in New York. I mean, New York City in the 80s, but also you're 19. You're one of the youngest, best talents that's ever come across. Um, not all kinds of people, including women who <laughs> throw themselves <laughs> at you at that age for about two or three years. And, I mean, you're just you're like a rocket ship to the moon. How Give us a, a glimpse, even though it's been done before, into yes. into that kind of life and how it can be both obviously uh, euphoric, but uh, all kinds of of speed bumps. A lot of speed bumps. Um, you know, and, and things happen for a reason. Unfortunately, you know, I had some bad falls. I try to learn from those falls. And uh, unfortunately, along the way, you hurt people. You know, hurt my kids, hurt my family, but they forgave me. Um, the Lord forgave me, but I always had a hard time forgiving myself. Um, I was very fortunate. About two weeks ago, where the city gave me, they gave me, well, the mayor gave me the key of the city. As you guys know, I missed the parade in '86. That left a big scar, a big void in my in my heart. I was able to redo that, um, relive that moment with some good friends, Dr. Lou, and his family was there to take part in that. 
And so that was a big lift off me, a big burden. And so I feel like now my baseball um, career that I had, I could put closure to that because that was a big part that I missed. And then, um, as you mentioned with addiction, that's an everyday you know process. You never you never heal from it. You just take your medication. It's almost like if a, a, per, a, a patient has cancer, he gets his chemo. My chemo is going to meetings, being you know away from people, um, people, places, and things. Surround myself with a good support group, like you know Lou. He's a yeah. great friend. We talk all the time. Yeah. You keep things in perspective and just try to keep everything simple. But also, when I have bad days. Being able to tell on myself lets me know how I'm really feeling inside. Yeah, and Dr. Lou, I mean, you've known him for a few years now, Dr. Lou George from Siouxland Oral Surgery. He's the reason why Dwight Doc Gooden is here in town and chatting with us here on Sports Talk with Craig and John, ninety-eight one FM, twelve thirty AM, Sports Radio KWSN. Uh, you hear these things of people who have gone through rehab and have committed to being better people, but. There's relapses, and sometimes you wonder, especially if they're extremely public figures that get interviewed a lot like this, like Dwight, if it's genuine. Give us a glimpse into what it's like to be Doc Gooden's friend and how genuine it is. It, it still blows me away, you know, like I said. Uh, growing up, uh, knowing uh, this individual as this monumental sports hero and then getting the chance to meet him as an individual person and become friends, and I'm honored to call him part of my family now. and His whole family, just fantastic people. Um, you know, it, 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 it really is, uh, kind of one of those, uh, chances in a lifetime that, that come true. And, uh, my, uh, uh Siouxland, uh, business partner, uh, Dr. Dennis Miller and I are both huge baseball fans, but we really enjoy the individual aspect and getting a chance to, to meet someone like Doc Gooden and hear his story and then turn around and, and help him has just been truly humbling. And like I said, it's an honor to call him a part of our family. 